Hello everyone, welcome back to another book review uh, and another Math Monday um, where I review books on math. I love math, I think math is great, um, and so I like to read books about them. So today I'm reviewing In Numeracy, Mathematical Illiteracy and Its Consequences by John Allen Paulos. Uh, before we even dive into this, I just want to say that I'm biased. I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics, so I obviously am going to see the arguments for the consequences of mathematical illiteracy more strongly than someone else. Um, this is, uh, well, it claims to be a national bestseller uh, at the top, so I assume that's correct. And it's also an older book. Um, this was the 20th anniversary or some sort of reprint of the original, and the original was written in the time when Ronald Reagan was still relevant politically, um, which he has not been president since I have been alive. I don't really know when Ronald Reagan was the president, which is kind of bad. He was the 80s, right? Right? Was he after Carter? This is revealing my extent of the US presidents before. Anyways, doesn't really matter. Just Ronald Reagan comes up a lot in this book as like a current political figure and I'm like hmm pretty sure he's dead right I don't even know he's you know he's dead he's, he's definitely dead um but Carter's still alive right he's like a hundred anyways not relevant at all so it's an older book um it's written by another mathematician so obviously a little biased but I pulled this off the shelf because I was interested to see what the author had to say, particularly because I've read a number of books that talk about the consequences of mathematical illiteracy or just not having a solid foundation in mathematics. And usually when they talk about mathematical illiteracy, they mean statistical and probabilistic illiteracy. So illiteracy in statistics or probability as opposed to math overall. Uh, and I wanted to see if he was going to actually talk about all the fields of math and maybe what illiteracy can, maybe not all the fields of math, but mathematics more generally and what illiteracy in those fields can kind of lead to or if he was going to focus more on statistics, statistics and probability. And um, there was some focus on other places he talks or other fields in mathematics. He does talk about uh, our inability to grasp large numbers like how much bigger a billion is from a million or maybe um, from a billion to a trillion making those leaps, especially if you have no way of conceptualizing those big numbers, can be very difficult. Um, he also takes some time to discuss uh, what I also believe is the root cause of a lot of people's lack of math skill, uh, which is poor mathematical education, um, which is a personal theory I have, um, which I'll get back to. But for the most part, this is probability and statistics and how not understanding them can lead to a lot of our misunderstandings or believing things we see in the media. Um, so he just talks through some some common things he sees, some common misunderstandings. He kind of breaks it out like that. And I think, well, it is a good read. Um, it's no better or worse than any other book on the topic, but that makes me wonder if the other books I've read on this topic came from maybe a result of this older book and as kind of like children from this, and maybe he was one of the first to do it. And so maybe looking back, it doesn't seem as groundbreaking, but it may have been more revolutionary at the time. Um, the, some of the things that I really liked in this book was the section where he talked about why he thinks people are math illiterate. He particularly points at women. I think maybe if I'm judging by Ronald Reagan in this book, um, this may have been like the 80s. So I think we've made a lot of strides in this field since then. Um, but he talks a lot about particularly women being turned off by the field and a lot of people in general believing that they don't have mathematical talent. I should say that uh, especially growing up, I definitely thought there was math people and not math people, and I was definitely in the not math people camp. I did not like math at all, and I was really bad at it, as in I got really subpar or lower than my average grades. Um, I was didn't do poorly in school, but they were not my best. They were probably my worst, the worst grades I ever received in school were going to be in math until I had a teacher who made it make sense for me. Um, and I think the point he makes is that a lot of people don't have a very good foundation of mathematics in school or they're taught by teachers who aren't very good. And that, um, I think that's true. And that's kind of my personal theory is a lot of people um, have this fallacy that there are math people and there are not math people. And then the math people are the mathematical whizzes who can calculate huge numbers in their head and understand calculus on the first time the professor does a problem on the board. I was not in those categories. 
but I think a lot of that stemmed from before that good teacher who made it make sense for me. I, I, I there was no, I had no good teaching on it. Um, and I definitely am not a math whiz for lack of better terms. So I, I, math does not come easily to me. Uh, there were a lot of people though in my major in college who were very clearly, um, very clearly had a skill for mathematics. They were, it just intuitively came to them and without much study. And I think the reason why the field looks like that from the outside is because of that belief. So because people believe you're either a math person or you're not, if you have any amount of struggle in school, you say, well, I'm not a math person, so I'm going to think it's hard. Combine that with a lack of good teachers in the, um, in like your, uh, school years and you think that you're not good at math so why would you ever do it so the only people who wind up going to get math degrees in these higher education programs at college or universities are people who were really good at math intuitively so maybe they didn't need a good teacher or maybe they were lucky enough to have a good teacher who fostered that ability within them and now they're the only ones going into the program which i definitely think is still a problem and he addresses one of the reasons why he thinks that is is because he doesn't think teachers get paid enough, which is 100% true. Um, so, like, if you look up average teacher salaries, and then you talk to anyone who got a math degree who did not become a teacher, I can almost guarantee they all made more than what your average teacher is going to make. I think teaching math would be very, very interesting. I'm not willing to work for the uh, low amount of money that they were going that they would pay me if I were to go into math teaching. So, of course, I'm going to go somewhere else with my skills. Um, and that, that's kind of a shame. And I'm sure people can also make the argument, but it's so, we need people who have a pure heart. Yeah, but if you can't pay the bills or if you can't afford to have a family on that, then why, you're, you're disincentivizing people who have those skills who need to be taught. So I think he makes that point in this book, which I really like. Um, I think it's kind of more of a well-known problem now. Um, and I think it's even more well-known among people who study math. Like, well, out of all the things I'm going to do, why would I become a math teacher? It was kind of a sentiment that a lot of people had in my program, because obviously all of us can make more money and do make more money not being teachers. Um, and there were some people who went on to be teachers because they had such a passion for it. And I really commend people like that because we do need good math teachers. And I would not go the path I had, I was on if I didn't have a teacher who taught math to me in a good way. So it's kind of a, kind of me being hypocritical here. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, just because I want to plug something else that I really enjoy in here, um, is he talked about how it would be interesting to have someone talk about the statistics in the news and say, is this correct? Or did they use some sort of fallacy? Or is it kind of misleading the way they're going to tell you it? And maybe you didn't catch on to it because of your mathematical illiteracy. Um, which I actually listened to a program from BBC Radio Four, I think it is, called More or Less, which I love, which does just that. They take statistics that have been reported in the news and they say, is this really what it seems on face value? Was there a mistake in the data? Has this been reported in a certain way? Is it technically true, but maybe they didn't say it in the most um, straightforward way? Maybe it's been sensationalized. So I think that podcast, More or Less, um, is really interesting. Now it is from BBC, so there's definitely a focus on stuff that's happening um, in the UK uh, or in Europe, but I think any numbers lover would love it. Or if you're just interested after reading this book and wondering how much of the statistics in our news gets sensationalized, just giving a listen to the show really have and really having people dive into the numbers um, is a great way to kind of see how these numbers can kind of get moved around before they come to us. Even if no one's trying to deceive you, um, just just knowing how things can be altered or shifted, um, either to be sensationalized or because someone doesn't have a good understanding of the data when they report it, or someone misinterprets um, maybe a study or a finding and then it gets reported one way when it really should be reported a different way or it doesn't mean as much as you think it does. So that's a very good program that when he talked about it, I was like, man, I don't know what happened to John Allen Paulos. I don't know if he's still teaching or if he's just living a great life, but I wonder what he would think of that show because he definitely mentioned that in the book. Like I said before, this was only a three-star read for me because I don't think it did anything different or special from any of the other books on this topic that I really enjoyed, um, that I have really enjoyed in the past, but I think it was a good read overall. I think if you haven't read anything on the topic, this might be a good starting point. It's pretty short, um, 170, 180 pages exactly. Um, and... Yeah, I read this basically while waiting to get my hair cut this morning. Um, 
and I got it knocked out. So yeah, this is a this would be a good starting point, I think. I think maybe since this time, um, maybe better books have been written on the topic. This is by no means a bad place to start. If you have read this book or have any thoughts on it or have any thoughts on mathematical illiteracy or as we probably should say statistical probability um, or illiteracy regarding statistical or probabilistic methods for reporting. I don't know what I'm saying. Statistics and probability is what they really mean whenever they say these sort of things. Um, let me know. Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, have a great day.